Good morning and good afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you for joining the Acumatica webcast on what's new in Acumatica Manufacturing Edition. My name is Ray, Ray Ribello. I'm the Director of Product Marketing. And because I am in product marketing, I love to talk about enhancements to our product. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We're excited about all these wonderful enhancements. A couple of housekeeping issues. We are recording this. Uh, it will be available for you to review or share uh, later next week. If you have any technical issues during the webinar, please type those into technical support and one of our top-notch people will help you. Uh, finally, um, please ask questions uh, through the chat window. Go ahead and put them in and we'll go ahead and answer them at the end. Uh, if, it's, if a question we can answer immediately, we'll do it. Otherwise, we'll answer it in a whole group atmosphere. Okay, let's talk about John Schlemmer. He's been doing this for over 30 years, sales, marketing, services, and manufacturing, ERP and supply chain solutions. His specialties in building and managing sales and service organizations, both in the direct and the channel uh, model. John has held leadership roles for a variety of software companies, which has given him both a industry expertise as well as an extensive knowledge of available, available solutions in the marketplace. John, it's all yours. Thanks, Ray. I really appreciate it. Um, as Ray said, my name is John Schlemmer. I'm the CEO of Job Systems, and uh, our company is, is excited with our partnership with Acumatica and developing of the Acumatic Manufacturing Edition. And what I'm going to talk a little bit about today is some of the new enhancements that we've created for the uh, Acumatic new release 2018 R2. We're really excited with this. Just kind of a quick background for people who may not uh, know that much about Acumatic Manufacturing. Uh, it is built for manufacturing companies in to make the stock, make the order, engineer to order, project-centric, job shop, repetitive, and batch processing. Uh, it includes a variety of different modules. Uh, it includes a bill and, bills and material module, production orders where all the costing and scheduling is done, uh, and the MRP, material requirements planning module. There's also an estimating module, so if it's something you've never done before and it's purely custom, uh, you can actually go out and do an estimate, build that, get it to the customer, and the customer can go ahead and approve that, and then you can create that into uh, production orders and bills of material. There's also a product configurator module, which is more features and options based. Uh, so it's rules based, it's hierarchical, uh, it can, it's dimensional as well, so you can actually go out and pick and choose the features and options and dimensions, and we can calculate the material. All of this integrates back into other portions of the system, so customer management within opportunities from a CRM standpoint, uh, obviously from a distribution standpoint and inventory, sales orders and purchasing, uh, as well as projects now. We're, we're really excited about this one. We just completed uh, the project extensions, and then ultimately everything goes back to financials. So some of the some of the enhancements I'm just going to touch on real quick, and then we're going to go into a presentation. But we've just released the advanced planning and scheduling module. Uh, this allows for finite capacity planning. Uh, so based on the capacity within your facility, uh, we're going to be able to finitely uh, schedule that throughout the facility. Uh, this is done through more of a rough cut planning screen that we'll demonstrate. Uh, it also takes into account work center capacity, uh, the work center schedule, and you can hard allocate materials throughout the entire system. So if you need to buy something particularly for a production order, then when you create that purchase order, that, that component on that purchase order, as an example, is hard allocated to that production order. So when you receive it in, it goes directly to that production order. We've also created a project integration to where you can create production orders directly from project tasks. Uh, you can also do this from sales orders. So there's a couple different ways from a flexibility standpoint that you can do that. We can track that all the way through from a production standpoint, and then the cost actually gets updated onto the project, so you can review your overall project 
Uh, if you have things like installation or engineering time that you wish to capture, that's not on an actual production order. We've also tied the project system into the estimating system as well, so you can do estimates for a particular project. Then there's a couple other enhancements that we've made throughout. Uh, there's some, some updates to our production management. We've created a couple of great user, inter, uh, user uh, enhancements where from a make the order standpoint that I'll show, uh, we can create production orders, multiple production orders at once, uh, which I'll demonstrate through as well as the printing of, of travelers. And then the bill of material and the routing, we've actually gone in and, and created a couple of enhancements that customers have asked for that we can uh, have a bill of material start off on hold, and then we have an approval process that you can go through and make it active. So now it's available to be produced, and then you can actually archive that bill of material as well. If you need to bring that archive bill of material back in, you can actually do that. You put it back on hold and make it active, and then you're going to be able to do that through the process. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go through the projects, uh, the project extension. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to select one of my projects. And this is the this is my project that I'm actually, it's a road builder, I, or it's for the road builder. It's a, it's a time materials project with some inventory. I'm going to click on my tasks, and you can see that I have a variety of different tasks here that I want to accumulate costs on. So project management tasks, some installation, and then some materials for the project that are not manufactured. I then have three different manufacturing tasks associated with this. And then I can actually come in and create a production order directly from here. Now, there's a variety of different production order types that you can pick and choose from. I, in this case, I've selected a uh, produ production order or project order that I want to track this by as opposed to just a regular manufacturing order that I may just build and put into stock. I can then come in and select the inventory item that I need to go ahead and create from a production standpoint. The warehouse is where I'm actually going to build this particular product to, and then a location is the location within the warehouse that I'm going to, I'm going to put it away. Now, I've also extended this uh, to Actimatic as Construction Edition, so you do have the capability of putting cost codes as well as the project ID and the task. You can also assign cost codes to this as well. Now, once I've created production orders, I have the ability to come in and view these production orders directly from the project. So as a project manager, I can come in and see what the status is of my production order simply by clicking the hyperlink. It brings in my production order. In this case, it's simply planned right now. It's due to be started uh, on this particular date. The key to this is we've tied this back to the project, the project task in this particular cost code. You also have the capability to uh, add a project or a project task and cost code on the production order and not update the project. Uh, but you just want to track this back and, and know that it was for this particular project and project task. So you, we give you the flexibility to whether or not you need to update the project or not. When the production order has transactions associated with it, it updates the project and will update within the cost budget the actual quantities that were completed and the actual amount from a cost standpoint. Now, some of the enhancements that we've made on the production order side, I'm going to actually start an inventory. So if I come into inventory and I select a particular item that I manufacture, within the inventory stock item screen, there's a manufacturing tab, which we've added a make to order item. So if you check this box, this basically says I'm going to make this to order. Uh, what this gives us a lot of flexibility with is if you get into hybrid manufacturing, and you've got make the order and make the stock items, we can differentiate between which ones are make the order and which ones are make the stock. Now, why is that important? So when I go to sales orders and I look at a particular sales order, then on my line items that I'm actually buying, so here's the product that we just looked at in inventory, and I'm going to, you know, I need a quantity of one for this particular customer, and I need that by the 25th, but at the end of the day, 
there's a mark for production uh, checkbox. If I have that item checked as I make the order item, we'll automatically check this mark for production box. Now, what that allows me to do, we have always had the capability to where I could actually come in and directly create a production order from the sales order screen and link that production order directly to that particular sales line item. Now, a lot of companies that had actually had said, well, that's great, but we want to be able to do that out of production. So if I go into production orders, now I have a create production orders processing screen to where anything that is listed as marked for production that has not had a production order created for it, I have the capability to come in here. I can pick and choose one, two, or I can process all of these. There's a variety of different sorting capabilities uh, that I could do to uh, filter out this particular grid. And then once I go ahead and I create this production order, now I can actually go through the normal production process. One of the other things that's been added is we have the capability to print mass print uh, production tickets or travelers. So again, a lot of capability to filter this out. You have the capability to automate this via schedule uh, to where I don't have to come in here and actually go through the process. I can automatically schedule this. In the background, it will automatically kick in on, on given points in time, whether it be on a daily basis, a monthly basis, weekly. I can do it down to the minute. I can do it based on a condition that I need to do, and it will automatically print in that particular case. Now, also within here, there's a couple things from a, an advanced planning and scheduling I mentioned. So within the advanced planning and scheduling, I have the capability to come in and set up what's termed a block size. Now, within the block size, we have a variety that we've set up. If a block size is anything that's divisible into 60. So you could actually fine-tunely and schedule your shop down to a minute basis, uh, but most people are going to do it in a, in a 5, 10, 15, 30, and one-hour basis. Uh, so you do have the capability to set up your block size from a scheduling standpoint based on these parameters. Now, what that does is that allows me to come in, and on my advanced planning and scheduling maintenance, I have the capability to come in and change that block size. So if I change my block size on the prior screen, I'm going to need to come in and run my uh, advanced planning and scheduling maintenance. That way, I can I can get more blocks within that particular time window. So just as an example, if I had this at 30, then I'm going to get two blocks per hour. If I have it at 15, I'm going to get four blocks per hour. And then I can also update work center schedules from the calendar within here. So if I add or subtract any type of capacity from a particular work center, then I'm going to want to be able to run this process so I can update everything throughout the system. Now, within that as well, you've also had the capability, and these are a couple other things that we've added within the order types, within the data entry settings, we have a variety of different data entry settings, and again, this is by order type, that you can set up to whether or not you want to allow under issue of material. Now, under issuing material, I may want it, I may allow that, I may want to warn the person that's actually doing that transaction that you, you're going to under issue this material, or I may I elect not to allow that. So that way the system will prevent the under issue of material. So there's a variety of different uh, data entry settings that we, we've set up to allow you to uh, manage your shop more efficiently. On top of that, we have a default operation move quantity. So if you actually back flush uh, material, you have the capability to come in. And if I'm doing 10 on a given production order, if I complete five one day and then I complete five the next day, the next time I come in here, the system would default to five because it already knows that I completed five the prior day. From an over issue standpoint on the material, we've also included unreleased batch quantities. So if, if somebody has a, they've completed a batch from a material issue standpoint and it has not been released, we want to be able to go in and look at both of those 
to where we we're not going to overissue material on that. Now the rough cut planning screen is actually where we've come in and could think of it as a scheduling workbench. So these are all my production orders that I need to uh, that are in my facility that are either in these statuses over here. So they're either planned, I've released them, which means now I can do financial transactions, or they're in process, which means I've already started working on those and have actually done a financial transaction. Now I have a couple things that I can do in here. I can change the dispatch priority within here. And so five is the default, which is the middle of the road one being the highest and 10 being the lowest. So as a planner, I can come in and see what work I have that I need to schedule. And then I can also change the constraint date on here so that I can, I can move my schedule around based on the constraint date and based on the dispatch priority. Now another thing, if I actually hyperlink into this particular, this particular production order, this one's in a planned state. And I have the capability to come in and I can view that particular schedule. So if I come in and view that particular schedule for this particular order, this is the work center scheduling screen. If I could look at this by my overall site or warehouse, I could look at it for a specific work center within that warehouse. Uh, I, and then I could look at it for any order type and a specific production number. And then I also have a capability to look at this in a date range. So I've chosen in this particular case just to look at this one. You'll notice that I'm going through these three operations. So these are the three work centers that I'm doing. The, the scheduled blocks that we talked about earlier is set at zero. This tells me that it's infinitely scheduled at this point in time. And the start and end time is also infinitely scheduled. So at 11.59 to 11.59, that shows that it's infinitely scheduled. Now, these are the actual schedule times based on my run rates that I have set up in my bill of material. Uh, this is the production order number, the operation, and then you can actually put additional things on here. Now, I wanted to show that because now when we go out and actually schedule this, then we're going to uh, be able to see how that changes. We'll go out and actually schedule this. I can actually release this order directly from here. Uh, so it gives flexibility to where the planner can actually go out and release these orders to the floor. I, I don't have to do this, and then you would do it through a different facility. But I'm going to go ahead and release this order at the same time and schedule it. So now when I come into my production order side, and I look at my production order maintenance, Here's the order 3715 that we actually just scheduled and released. So if I look at my status here, I can see that it's released. And then when I come into my production order maintenance header, this one is released now at this particular time. Now, I do have the capability, if need be, to come in and change the dispatch priority as well here and the constraint date, provided that I have security to do so. We do both. Uh, start on and finish on, so both forward and backward, as well as infinite and finite capacity, uh, so we can handle a variety of different needs on that front. Now, if I look at my schedule again, then you'll notice that now I have scheduled blocks. So in this particular case, I'm going to start this, and all of this is based on the capacity that I've set up within this particular work center uh, and based on this particular shift. So I have five scheduled blocks. So in essence, this is running an hour and 15 minutes, which, as you can see, it starts at 9 a.m. It's going to end at 10.15. And then the next operation will start at 10.15, end at 11.15, and then it will move on to the last operation at 11.15 and 11.30. So a couple of these things on this is uh, we're adding some overlap to this in the next few weeks. Uh, to where you can see that this one takes up a little, only an hour and six minutes, so I have nine minutes to where I can actually fine-tune that even further. So those are some of the enhancements that we've actually created within the system now. Um, we're excited about where, where the product is going. 
Uh, you know, and then on top of that, we have the capability to come in and on these data views, we can actually create different views for uh, production as an example. So if I actually came in and look at the manufacturing dashboard, we have to add some things in here, but you know, we could add different bar charts, we could add different uh, tables, we can add uh, you know, things as far as uh, you know, uh, bar charts that show uh, a Gantt view. Uh, so those are the things that we're, we're excited about, we're working on those, and, and we expect to have those out here in the next week or two. Uh, to add to this to give more of a visual effect to the the actual raw data. So I appreciate everyone's time. Those are the those are the highlights of where we are with the product, and, and we're really excited about this release. Uh, and, and we're going to continue to move forward with the production and, and enhancements of the product to make it even more user friendly and give more depth to the product. So with that, I that's terrific, John. Thank you very much. Uh, these are major enhancements, and we are so very happy to be able to uh, share that with everybody. Um, well, let's see what we have here as far as questions. Are you ready to answer some questions, John? Um, what is sure. the best way? What what is the best way to evaluate cloud solutions? That's a pretty open ended question. But what is the best way to evaluate cloud solutions? Yeah, and you are right. That is that is an open ended question. Um, but one of the things you know that we find is you know performance level uh, should clearly be evaluated, and the vendors uh, should they should be able to deliver uh, high speed delivery of those applications online. Uh, you know, you'll also want to make sure that uh, that vendor has the depth and breadth of the product that allows you, so it's not just a bill of material and it's not just a, a production order. Uh, you need the depth and breadth in case you need to utilize those features going forward. Uh, one of the other things is a service level agreement uh, of the vendor, you know, especially from an uptime and a support standpoint. Um, you know, the, the cybersecurity as well as another one from, you know, security and compliance concerns. Uh, you know, one of the other things within cloud that, that we've found is, you know, do, does the development company or the vendor utilize APIs? And you integrate with additional systems, you know, whether they be cloud or on-premise, um, but, you know, a cloud-to-cloud -cloud operation within the APIs. And how easy is that to, you know, customize or, you know, on top of that, how easy is it to customize, you know, reports and, and, and dashboards to your particular needs? And, and ultimately, when you look at all that, you know, you're comparing apples to apples now, you know, now you're really looking at comparing costs. And, you know, that's what we've found a lot of the customers are, and prospects are looking at. Uh, you know, they want to make sure the vendor is stable. They want to make sure the vendor... Uh, you know, has a security with their with their offering, and they want to make sure that they can interconnect to other systems or the big ones. That's good. Thank you. Um, here's another general question. It says, "How does a cloud app work in manufacturing?" I'm not sure if that's seeing the mechanics of it or just it works very well. But how does a um, cloud app Work in manufacturing. Yeah, there's there's a there's a couple things that I'd mention about that. I mean, it it does allow you know the users to have every piece of information that's contained in one central place in real time. Uh, there's nothing you know, no jockeying around, if you will, between you know cumbersome systems or islands of automation. You know, I got to download it to Excel or something to get some information. Uh, so, and, and then you find that data necessary to, to be able to perform the job. Uh, you know, all the information is stored securely in one place. Uh, you know, especially if the question before actually ties into this, you know, from a security standpoint, manufacturers are concerned about their bills of material. Uh, so if they're stored securely in one place, you know, you're, you're good there. The other key thing I think, you know, especially with cloud, is, you know, can you access this via a browser? So we have particular customers that, 
utilize mobile, they have tablets, um, they have machines integrated with the cloud app so they can actually see that uh, a particular machine may have gone down as an example. But, uh, you know, there's, there's CEOs of, of our companies right now, they're running their business off of their mobile phone. So they can actually come in and see exactly what's going on in production based on their mobile phone. Amazing. You know, this kind of goes to the second, the that third question, which is um, how hard is it to access project details when we're on the shop floor or offsite? Yeah, so you know, to an extent we answered that, but, um, you know, it's really not difficult. You know, as long as you have security in order to do that, and, you know, you've got a device with that browser, you know, details can be retrieved any, anywhere, anytime. Um, best example I have is we have a customer in Auckland, New Zealand, that, you know, he was, he was actually in my office in, here in the States, and, you know, he, he pulls out his mobile phone and he says, this is how I'm running my business. So he has, you know, a whole bunch of uh, dashboards that are on his mobile. Uh, you know, he, he actually can see, unfortunately, he got notified one of his machines went down in New Zealand, uh, but he was able to call somebody directly at that point in time because he got notified, and he could actually get that machine back up and running before the you know the employees actually came back to work the next day. Uh, so it's it's you know extremely easy to get the access to the information. That's wonderful. That's one of the promises of cloud and mobile. Um, one more question. Uh, do you have any plans to incorporate a calendar visualization for manufacturing? Uh, we do. So that's, that's one of the things I alluded to. Uh, there's a couple things that we're looking at. There's, there's kind of a Microsoft Outlook uh, view to where you can bring it up on the screen. It's going to have a calendar based on your work calendar. So if you work Monday through Friday, it'll show Monday to Friday. It will uh, give you a chart across the top as far as these are the production orders that, and, and if it takes three days as an example to utilize, then it'll block off those three days at the top. You'll be able to see all the production orders that are, that are being worked on in that particular day. Uh, and then, you know, so that's one view that we're looking at here in the next couple of weeks. The other view is, is more of a Gantt chart type view that's going to show uh, the production order at the top, and then have the work centers indented at the bottom, at, on, right underneath those, to where you're going to be able to see the offset of those work centers, and when, and then the date would be on the bottom axis. So yes, absolutely. Super, super. Well, John, that's the end of the questions. Thank you very much for a very informative uh, presentation, and more importantly, a demonstration on how this actually works and works very well. Thanks again, John. And thanks for all the Bye. folks that have, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> and thank you for all the folks who dialed in and joined this webinar. Just remind your reminder that we're going to have this up uh, uh, for you to uh, share uh, or actually re uh, review it uh, at your leisure. Uh, if there's anything else, you can contact me. Um, my email is rrebello, R-E-B-E-L-L-O, acumatica.com and I will get those questions answered for you. Again, have a good day. Bye now.